Hi everyone, my name is Menina. My name, I'm in the community team uh, running uh, some of those SAP community calls and I'm really happy to have you joined for this uh, session today, uh, which is called Predict Missing Master Data and Tra Transactional Data Using SAP AI Business Services. Um, we have Satish Ailu with us. He's product manager for SAP AI Business Services and uh, happy to, of course, give you more insights into the today's sessions. Um, since I'm your host, uh, I just want to give you some housekeeping notes. So we do have a chat. Uh, you can exchange with each other. Uh, we also have a Q&A area where you can already start posting questions throughout the presentation. Uh, we will, of course, have enough time at the end of this call uh, to address your questions and also feel free to um, raise your hand if you want to speak up later. But that's it for now uh, in regards to housekeeping notes. And I would say, Satish, you can you can get started with your um, session. Thank you, Melina. Thank you, Ryun, for joining. So today, in the next 20 minutes or so, we will look at uh, the topic of predicting mass missing master data and transactional data using AI business services. Uh, so standard disclaimer, uh, you know, you know, whatever we present is, uh, you know, forward looking statements are, uh, are not really subject to contacts. Yeah. Now, this is the agenda for today. So we look at uh, introduction of a business services for those of you who are new to the AI business services. Then we look at uh, what is a data attribute recommendation service. After that, we look at a list of use cases and then uh, we'll have a live demo. And after that, um, I quickly cover the high level architecture and then we'll go to Q&A. So to start with, right, I think uh, the, uh, you know, in general, the intelligent enterprise demands a lot of AI capabilities. And uh, I mean, AI is nowadays everywhere, right? Uh, you know, anything that we do ranging from phone all the way to anything that we do in a day-to-day -day life, uh, we use AI all over the place. But in terms of enterprise, we are not there yet. And the idea is to build that intelligent enterprise uh, using many of these AI capabilities that we have. And SAP provides many of these solutions today uh, for you, uh, AI technologies for you to actually use them and uh, build the intelligent enterprise for you to be it analyzing some situation or recommendations or doing automation or data extraction, anything as such. So for our discussion today, what we will focus on is more on the uh, AI business services offering. So this is our vision uh, as SAP for building uh, the intelligent enterprise. And if you look at the overall framework that we have uh, defined for our customers and how we will help them uh, build their intelligent enterprise, one of the core pillars is the technology layer. And that's where uh, we will focus on today. Even in the technology layer, uh, we provide a set of things under business technology platform. And in that we have many capabilities, be it from data management for analytics or integration and intelligent technologies. And under intelligent technologies, we provide a host of things. And one of the key things is a business services. And what these a business or services, we'll look at that in a minute. But uh, as you can see, these are the list of services that we provide. And uh, these are the ones that uh, we'll quickly touch upon in the next uh, slide, yeah. So a business services are nothing but reusable services that are based on AI. Uh, so, you know, you might have heard about these terms called technical services and all sorts of things, but uh, the, the difference between a technical service and a business service is uh, a business service is something that is geared to solve a specific business problem. Yeah? And uh, AI business services are based on SAP AI technology. That is the difference. And what they help do is uh, they facilitate use of artificial intelligence to solve business challenges in your enterprise and make them intelligent. And the way we make them available to you is uh, using REST APIs. So you can take this service and consume it uh, in any application that you already have or in any existing application or even new application in a very, very easy, uh, easily consumable format. And with this, what you could do is uh, with, with less uh, you know, friction to use this, you can actually get faster time to value. You can make your existing prop, you can completely reimagine your processes. You can uh, you know, uh, enable innovations at a faster pace. So these are the business outcomes uh, that we aim to deliver with a business services. Now, in terms of uh, realize, I mean, the, the goal is to realize rapid value uh, because uh, if you have to build a, a, a production grade service uh, or a, uh, kind of that is based on AI, it's going to take a lot of time. And our goal with AI business services is to make sure you get faster time to business value and use the best processes that works for you in your business process 
and uh, ability for you to consume this in a much more easier format using our standardized uh, SAP business technology platform. So that is the overall vision of uh, AI business services. And uh, these are all the services that we provide today, uh, business ent 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 recognition, document information extraction, document classification. So all of these three services are classified under uh, an umbrella called business document processing. And the aim of all these services is to provide a, a, a suite of services for you to work with the various kinds of documents and do document specific aspects. Uh, but what we will look at today is more around a data at recommendation service, which is more towards uh, you know, maintenance of structured data or even automation around that area. So we won't touch upon I, I invoice object rec uh, recommendation or uh, service ticket intelligence. Yeah? So these are other services that you can watch our other community calls where we already uh, did some sessions on this or uh, which are upcoming. Now, looking at first data at recommendation service, what it means now. So let's look at a, a business challenge, right? You know, for example, uh, uh, you know, Bob is in a, in a user at, um, in mass data team. And what he's trying to do is he has a list of, uh, he's trying to create material master, right? And what he has is he has description and he has manufacturer details and price, but he doesn't have the category and subcategory that comes to him. So he gets this information in a simple Excel, and now he's trying to manually enter these things. Now. What happens is uh, the, the, the hard part with this is uh, Bob uh, need to spend a lot of time trying to think, okay, this particular item, for example, LED illumination, uh, you know, okay, what is the category that it should go under? You know, should it be cam camcorders or should it be, you know, computer tablets? You know, only, only a person with uh, business uh, expertise can do this. So Bob spends a lot of time manually reviewing, reviewing these things and then updating these things. But if you look at it, uh, this is a very, very manual process. And uh, there is a, an option for us to uh, automate this uh, process. So this is where uh, uh, you know, uh, our service comes into the picture. And what we do is um, we actually take this uh, you know, data with categories and we actually uh, use it as training data and we pass it to data rec attribute recommendation service and we train a machine learning model with it, right? So once you train a machine learning model, now it actually learns all the patterns in this and what kind of descriptions and manufacturers are classified into certain category and uh, subcategories, right? Now, next time when any of these things come in, uh, you know, Bob doesn't have to spend trying to basically, uh, you know, manually think of what that category could be. Now, the service actually automatically predicts these things for you so that you don't have to waste time on manual tasks. So this is the fundamental, uh, you know, uh, idea behind uh, data recommendation service. And uh, we, we plan to basically automate, uh, you know, any, not just master data here, anything that actually requires, uh, you know, uh, filling uh, certain fields based on a, uh, another set of fields, yeah? So this can be applied to other, other use cases as well. Now, in summary, uh, this is what uh, we just covered, right? So uh, data attribute recommendation service, uh, you can pass in, you know, to, for it creating mass data records, or you can even look at inconsistent mass data records, or this could be missing attributes in transaction data records, right? All of these, you can take them and you can use the use a service like DAR to predict the missing fields or uh, in mass data as well as transaction data, or even, or even you can use that for corrections as well, right? And then with that, what you get is consistent mass data and transactional data records, or even, you know, we look at the use cases, how this actually will work in a real use case. But the idea is uh, a data attribute recommendation service helps you classify um, you know, entities such as you know, be products or uh, sales orders or you know, anything, right? Anything that can take pretext numbers or categories as input and then predicts, uh, predicts certain fields uh, based on this. And it is a supervised learning uh, uh, you know, a service. So basically you don't have to worry about the algorithm or anything. All you need to eat, you know, give is, okay, these are the influencing features that will uh, define uh, the prediction. You, you define that in, in a format that uh, the API needs. And then, you know, once you pass that, then the service will do all the magic for you and then build up the model. And after that, you can use that model for uh, predicting that uh, missing fields. Right? So all of the idea is to help automate many of these manual processes and, uh, you know, make it faster. So let's look at uh, some of the use cases uh, that uh, we can use with uh, a service like uh, data recommendation service. So one of the most common uh, use cases is uh, predicting missing mass data fields for new product introduction. So we looked at this in the beginning, right? I mean, like uh, the example that I showed where Bob was actually trying to create material master, but uh, that the same thing can be applied to any, any, other, any other scenario where you're uh, introducing a new product. You know, you could be getting it from a web-based system. Let's say you have a, a third-party supplier you're working with 
and they actually give you as, as, as an API in a web-based system. And now you have the API. Now you want to use that actually to predict that missing field, right? So, so when, when you have these kind of scenarios, the idea is, uh, you know, with minimum number of input fields, so uh, you could actually predict the missing fields. So, uh, and I mean, the, the example that I showed, we were only predicting categories and subcategories, but you could predict anything you want, you know. Technically, it could be other fields. It could be custom fields that you have in your company, or it could be any other things. You know, you could uh, you could use it for predicting any number of fields as long as it, there is a pattern and uh, there is some uh, definition uh, tied to them, and where uh, you know you know where you where the where the machine can learn from it. So when we do the training as well, it gives a lot of metrics around that, so that uh, you can actually see how the accuracy works and everything. So with uh, minimal inputs, uh, you know, in this uh, predicted mass data creation scenario, we could actually. Uh, give that and the person who is actually entering the data doesn't need to know the holistic view of the mass data in the entire picture you know without the entire knowledge somebody would be able to complete this process with the help of a service like a, a data recommendation service that can be used uh, to help the business user and this can also be applied to you know situations where you have uh, partner maintenance, business partner maintenance, right? You know, not just uh, creation meter master, or it could be like work central maintenance or, you know, custom field value prediction, any of these fields that we can think of, right? And once we do these things, uh, the whole idea is anything that is a manual entry can be automated. And uh, we have a seamless approach across the across the services, right? It's, it's gonna be very consistent. Uh, the quality is gonna be consistent uh, because uh, it's actually trained on existing uh, labeled data set that uh, you have actually provided uh, based on the right recommendations yeah so that is the whole idea of uh, having this for this uh, mass data use case now uh, this second use case is more on the on the sales order creation processing if you look at our sales orders processing this is actually a very very big use case and uh, one of our largest customers uh, uses this uh, for their use case as well and the idea with the with this is uh, there are even hundreds of thousands of sales orders that you get and the challenge with them is uh, when you get it from uh, a different uh, channels right i know Maybe you're getting it from, uh, you know, from somebody in a customer service center, or you're getting some of them from a web-based uh, interface, something from a third-party system. All of these things, they actually come with incomplete uh, information, right? You know, there could be some fields that are missing because of the way they are entered in the source system, or it could be wrong, whatever reason, right? So when they all come in, what happens is uh, in a typical scenario, they would go into a shared service center, and uh, somebody like an agent actually looks at them and tries to complete them manually. So this is a lot of manual effort. In fact, for the customer that we talk about, they had uh, they had uh, over uh, you know 100,000 uh, you know uh, sales orders that were getting in a month, and a good 10% of them were actually you know uh, had incomplete, and that was a significant amount of time that are spending doing these uh, manual corrections. So that's when we actually worked with the customer and uh, you know try to see if we can automate this process. And that's when we uh, went and did a POC with uh, our service, the data recommendation service. And then it was able to actually predict those missing fields uh, based on historical data. And now with uh, we, you eliminate a lot of these uh, middle uh, you know, level support that actually does this uh, manual entry. And the challenge with, uh, with the support is um, you actually, your sales orders are stuck in the middle and somebody has to review it. Uh, you know, with this, uh, you can actually make it uh, faster and you can actually deliver the stuff faster to your customer. So there's a lot of uh, satisfaction, uh, you know, customer satisfaction because your delivery is going to be faster. So overall, this has been a very, very uh, uh, good experience for uh, our customer who implemented this. Yeah? So this is a, a scenario where you could use uh, this service uh, for intelligent uh, sales order uh, processing. So the third use case uh, is a commodity code prediction use case. And this one is a use case where we actually have uh, a scenario where, uh, you know, you are doing cross-border uh, trade, uh, especially when you're doing a cross-border trade, you're shipping one goods to another, from one country to another country, especially if you look at a country, you know, in, in Europe, right? Uh, the borders are actually on, on the road. And, you know, whenever you do these things, uh, you actually get all of these, uh, there is a commodity code that you need to have, uh, a, a right commodity code when you're actually shipping between borders. And if you actually have the wrong commodity code, then, you know, your goods are stuck at the, the borders. And, uh, you know, having a good knowledge of this is going to be challenging as well. So one of the, one of the things that uh, we could potentially do is basically uh, take a service like uh, data recommendation service and take all of these, uh, you know, uh, influencing parameters and then uh, pass it to the DAR service and then the data recommendation service 
can actually predict the commodity code. With this, uh, you know, you can actually be assured that uh, you actually put in the right commodity code, which actually is based on, uh, you know, uh, real, real predictions, uh, because we can validate uh, based on the prediction confidence, you know, how the whole thing works. And then, you know, it reduces the overall manual effort and you don't have uh, goods stuck up at the, the borders. Yeah. So this is another use case. So another use case is uh, inbound mass data replication prediction. Uh, this is similar to what we did in the, what I explained in the first one, but this is a scenario where you have a third party PLM uh, product lifecycle management system, where you are getting a, a, in batch mode, a lot of these things, and you're trying to do a creation of these in thousands and thousands. So this is gonna be a challenge, especially in retail and fashion scenarios. So this is where you could use a service like a uh, data recommendation service that actually can uh, process this, uh, you know, using the surveys uh, in a REST API format and actually get the same thing. Uh, so there's another use case and you can reduce a significant amount of effort uh, in this case as well. Again, we can go on and on, uh, you know, on the, in terms of use cases. Uh, so this is a list of entire use cases, uh, as you can see, right, you know, uh, ranging from sales or procurement to, uh, you know, R&D. Uh, you know, we have uh, use cases uh, around all of these. Uh, we are not going to go into details of all of these, right? So either it is a price prediction or mass data maintenance or point of sale data, or even autofilling in a certain scenario, or uh, work center maintenance, or uh, you know looking at um, or financial financial related information, or you know ex predicting things like around that, or predicting delivery delays. So there are many many use cases where you could use it, uh, use the service in various contexts uh, for you to you know uh, predict a certain set of things. Yeah. So that is the idea. And uh, so, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll actually, you know, uh, leave it up to your imagination how you can use this and we won't get into all of these use cases details uh, so that, you know, uh, if, any, if anything, you know, we'll cover them in, in the questions. So before we go to the uh, demo, I want to quickly share uh, one customer use case, uh, live customer who's, who's already using it. So Servastal is a, is a Russian uh, steel company and steel and mining company. And one of the challenges they had was uh, they had a lot of returns because they were uh, incorrectly choosing material classes, right? Uh, and this was basically a huge challenge. About 21% of that was being uh, returned uh, because uh, because of wrong uh, material class was chosen. So at that time, what they did was, okay, why don't we, how can we eliminate this? That's when we worked with the customer. And overall, they were able to, uh, you know, train their mass data creation process uh, and, uh, you know, with, uh, with a data recommendation service. Now, they predicts it with the, with the right confidence. And with this overall, uh, there's a 20% uh, reduction in the, uh, you know, errors related to, uh, you know, uh, whatever are created, the material are created, and the overall effort is also reduced. So overall, their accuracy is increased for them, and they're able to do this in a much more uh, seamless way and uh, less errors. Yeah? So this is one of the customers. And we have other customers using as well, uh, but um, you know, referenceable-wise, these are public reference uh, that you could use. Uh, but of, of course, as I mentioned, one of our other uh, large customers using for sales order scenario, and we have others who are using it for various purposes as well. Uh, let me just uh, jump into the demo. So, so for the demo, what we will look at is, uh, so this is a use case uh, similar to what I just mentioned. Uh, so what we look at is, so you look at the description and uh, manufacturer and price. So we will use the same example. And what will happen is the, the, the service will predict these uh, hierarchical based categories, yeah? Categories, subcategory, and uh, other subcategories. So this is where I'm going to uh, switch my screen to the other screen and then share the demo. So let me just share my screen back. So please let me know if you can see the demo screen. Okay, yes. excellent. So, so here is the demo. So what we enter is uh, we're gonna enter the description here and manufacturer is uh, Eurocell and I'm gonna enter a price. So now when I enter these details and when I hit submit, now the service is actually calling this REST API and then it actually does the, does the prediction. And as you can see, uh, it predicts these categories as, uh, you know, connected home and housewares and housewares is a subcategory and under that is batteries, yeah? And this is a confidence level that you get as part of the service. And uh, based on this confidence level, you can automate this entire process that, okay, if the confidence level is uh, X, X percentage, then automatically fill this, you know, don't have to like uh, wait for this uh, to, to look at it, right? So maybe we'll look at another example. I'm just gonna enter this uh, another, another one, right? So this is uh, related to uh, another one. Let me just try to enter these details. And uh, let me just enter this. And this is going to be a different one. Let's see what it predicts, right? And uh, so the second case is more around, if you see, uh, it's an assortment related to GM vehicles. So definitely it's something to do with cars, right? And uh, music instruments related to that. Uh, I mean, sorry, related to cars. And uh, so if you look at it, it is categorized as cars and GPS. 
and installation parts and audio parts as you, you can see that right so we'll take another example let me just uh, take a, a music example where it can predict uh, music related things so so this is another one i'm just going to take a uh, audio is the is the brand and uh, just this is uh, this is another one so if i enter these things so you can see that uh, this is actually you can see a dynamic microphone definitely it's a uh, related to music and vocals right and this is the music instrument and microphone and uh, accessories right you can see uh, the beauty of the service is we have a various uh, we have various options in the service one is it can predict a single category or it can even predict a hierarchy right so this service is uh, is actually now here predicting a hierarchy basically categories and subcategories uh, so that's what uh, the service is doing again this is just a ui that we have built for the rest api but you are free to use this api in any place you want you know and uh, you can build your own ui or make it uh, part of your existing uh, service as well. Let me jump back into the presentation. Okay. So as you can see on the screen, so this is what we basically were uh, covering. You know, one of that was, this was actual data, right? And in fact, I used something different, right? So you can see I uh, used two examples. One was uh, character electronics, other one is uh, the Duracell one, and the third one was the musical instruments. Yeah? So, so this is the demo that we just did. Yeah? Now, in terms of, uh, I mean, this is a video just as a backup in case if it doesn't work. So we had the live demo working. So now uh, before we close out uh, and open up for questions, let's look at the architecture part, right? So in terms of architecture, uh, you know, the first thing you, want, you need to understand is how the whole process works, right? Uh, you said that, okay, this training all works, but how does the entire uh, workflow look from end to end? So the first step towards uh, training a machine learning model using uh, data attribute recommendation services, you upload the training data using a data set and using and set a data set schema for that. So the, the data set schema is where you define uh, what are the influencing factors uh, that, will, uh, that uh, are going to be used for predictions. So there is a format, it's a JSON file, you define it. And once you define that, then you basically trigger the training job. And the training job is actually, uh, I mean, the training data is uploaded and, uh, you know, the training job is triggered. And once the training is done, then you get the model. Once you get the model, then you actually deploy the model. You activate the model and then you deploy the model. After the model is ready, then you can actually uh, use it for predictions. Yeah? So this is the end-to-end -end process. And all of these can be done using REST APIs. So there's nothing like you need to go to any other place and do it. You could just uh, call the APIs using Postman or other, other, uh, other options that we provide. And you could, you could do that as well. Right. And in terms of architecture, this is a high-level architecture. So the example here is, uh, you know, here I've put in SAP applications, but it could be non-SAP applications as well. So imagine you are the end user and imagine this person is using a web interface and trying to enter this material master information here. And now what happens is uh, whenever it's trying to do enter certain information, the information is sent via HTTPS uh, to the BTP business technology platform. And then it actually calls the service, right? Uh, you know, we have all of these uh, services, uh, you know, that handle, uh, you know, uploading of data, training, or inference calls. So if it's an inference call, it actually makes a, a inference call here, then it does the cal classification and then returns back the response here. And all of this thing is currently running under uh, Cloud Foundry environment. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's up to the integration is basically how you want to do it, right? You could have, uh, you know, something like a cloud connector in the middle or, you know, or you could directly call it in, you know, directly uh, using the API as well. So it's up to you how you want to architect the application. But the idea is it's very, very simple to use. You can consume it from uh, any SAP applications or non-SAP applications. But again, this service is not uh, is not embedded automatically. You know, you need to use the service depending on your business process and use it. Yeah. So that is the whole idea. Uh, in terms of uh, what we provide in terms of uh, in the service uh, uh, are a few things, right? So what I showed example is this hierarchical template at the demo that you showed, where it predicts, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, a category and a subcategory. But if you look at it, we also have generic template. The generic template basically is uh, is the one that predicts a single, uh, you know, if you want to do a single class prediction, you can use that. So we also have some exciting, uh, you know, uh, roadmap for this. So we plan to launch AutoML uh, template uh, in, the, in the upcoming uh, quarters right and uh, automated template uh, is based on auto automated machine learning concept where uh, you know the system will actually uh, take the data and it will actually train with the amount of uh, time it you are given and picks the best more best machine learning algorithm that works and then gives you that right so this is going to be it's going to be an amazing thing once we have automated template uh, because the amount of use cases we can actually solve are going to be exponentially high uh, because uh, this will give us more opportunity 
uh, because the current model that we use uh, is based on deep learning. And sometimes, uh, you know, you need a lot of data for that. And in some use cases, uh, it may or may not, you know, there may be some use cases, it may not work. So in such kind of use cases, we could go for AutoML template, which can actually, uh, you know, uh, do these predictions. And these templates are nothing but, uh, you know, you specify this when you make this REST API call for training, the model template that you want to use. Uh, all of this is documented in the in the help, so you could uh, technically use this and uh, you know call these services, right? Uh, also, we also have other other uh, you know templates planned, uh, regression template. We also have other things that are going to be available as well in the future. Another part, of what we are looking at is uh, we are also uh, plan to release uh, uh, ISLM integration. ISLM is Intelligent Scenario Lifecycle Manager. So that one is uh, is, a, is a component that is basically used for uh, integrating any intelligent use cases into S4 HANA. So we will have support for that in the upcoming quarters as well. So that if you want to make any other S4 application that uh, does not come with it, you want to customize it to use the service, you could actually consume this, uh, you know, using ISLM and do this. And uh, the idea is all of these are, uh, you know, will be embedded as part of one service, and you can consume that as a, as a REST API in a in a CPA model. Uh, you know, or you could use it even as a PSDGO model as well. Yeah. So that is the idea. Uh, and these are the developer resources uh, we have, right? You know, we have uh, uh, in the discovery center, we have a complete uh, mission where you could actually kick off this mission and actually go step by step and understand the service, how the whole thing works. Uh, so, I mean, uh, she, she has actually shared uh, the links as well in the, in the chat. Please uh, uh, look at them. So we also have developer tutorials where you can actually go in detail. So we have, uh, uh, step-by-step -step mission, uh, you know, each of them, you, if you spend a good one hour, you can actually do this end-to-end. -end. So we have tutorial to that is done using Postman. Uh, you can also use other other options uh, where if you want to use, using a th other third-party tool, you can use that as well. So we also have uh, a Python SDK that you could use and also try that. We have tried tutorials for that as well. And even we have a Git repo for that where you could take the code and uh, use it. Um, so that's a second option. Uh, besides that, we have a lot of these, uh, you know, we have SAP community, of course, we are part of the SAP community call now. So we have a, a, a community page where you could actually uh, post your questions and we'll be happy to answer. And uh, we can, you can follow all of these uh, other notifications uh, related to these uh, topics uh, related to a business services, not just uh, our service. Of course, you can follow me, uh, you'll get the link anyways, so you can follow me. Uh, in fact, in fact, we have a blog that also uh, that I recently posted uh, last week, you can start to uh, use that blog, uh, you know, uh, that's more based on uh, uh, CPA content, uh, essentially uh, cloud platform integration content that you can use to connect to, uh, you know, an FTP server and you know do do all of that uh, cool stuff. Yeah, so you can do that as well. With that, uh, we'll open up for questions. Thank you, Satish. Uh, we already have a few questions uh, in the queue, so maybe we want to start with uh, the yep. top of this. So um, is is the data attribute recommendation service only accessible for s hana customers or can it be used on older ECC MDG versions? Yeah, good question. So if you look at the data attribute recommendation service, uh, this service is available as REST API. It is uh, not really integrated into S4 HANA today. You know? So what I just showed with ISLM is an integration option that we provide to customers that can integrate with S4 HANA. But if you want to use the service ECC, uh, you can do that as well, or MDG, you can use that as well because it is not really, the service is not really embedded as part of S4 HANA or ECC or MDG. You know? In fact, uh, one of the large customers that I said is, is actually using it in conjunction with uh, ECC. So what, they're, what they are doing is, uh, so currently their material master is in ECC. What they do is that they actually replicate the data in ECC into, into, an, into another, uh, you know, sidecar kind of an approach system where they basically replicate the data. And then using that, they're using a data intelligence to do all the orchestration to call that. And once the survey is done, then actually they update the ECC system. Of course, they built all the integration uh, because uh, the data recommendation service is a REST API. We don't provide the integration points for that. You need to use either cloud integration or any other options that you have uh, to do that. Uh, but again, yeah, so that is the option. Yeah, so it is. Uh, it, it can be used as long as you can actually consume it in any other systems. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is: Is the is the service available in S4 HANA as embedded solution or as additional add-on, or we have to integrate with uh, BTP? 
Correct. Yeah, this is actually related to the first question, I would say. So currently, this service is not embedded directly in test for HANA. So we have some use cases where we're working or with some of our internal teams to have this in integrated. Uh, but currently, it is not integrated directly in test for HANA or it's not embedded. So it's up to you as a customer to take this service and uh, you know you can use btp integration uh, you know uh, to actually you know make it work with that yeah so we don't provide that uh, so the so the service itself is a rest api today and it's up to you how you want to you know integrate it because uh, you can technically call uh, you know you can call it nabob stack as well if you want to you can build all that uh, cool content everything you know so that all can be done yes Thank you. I would also like to invite and remind the audience to also raise your hand if you have a pressing question that you would like to speak up, maybe explain to it further. Um, but meanwhile, I will continue with the questions in the queue. So the next question is, can the service work on the cloud platform Neo environment? Good question. So if you look at it, the service is actually offered by SAP on Cloud Foundry stack. What it doesn't mean is that, you know, because we don't really care where the application is, you know, because for us, we are providing the service as a REST API. If you want to consume in any other environment, you can, but SAP is, uh, you know, has, uh, has plans or a new environment. So I'm not really an expert in the new environment. So I would suggest you check with the new environment, new, uh, new environment, uh, uh, you know, the availability and the roadmap for that. So if your application is in your environment and it's going to be available to continue to available and it can accept REST APIs, uh, you know you can consume it uh, uh, but if the new environment is going away and uh, you know then you know you may not be able to use it because this is something nothing to do with our service you know it is something to do with new as an environment uh, but what we provide is uh, you know uh, basically rest api and that is coming from cloud foundry and that will be there in cloud foundry as well so for a consume for somebody to consume this service it doesn't matter where the service is currently hosted because all it uh, all all the consuming application care is uh, uh, you know you know what kind of uh, language does it use is it uh, what kind of architecture does it use to consume and it's rest api right architecture that we use so yeah it should be fine thank you can this component be installed on premise or is it integrated as a part of btp yeah unfortunately this is not an on-prem component you know and the reason for that is uh, we are using uh, advanced machine learning and uh, you know advanced deep learning approaches and that requires a GPU for that, you know. And GPU's uh, support is, is is very difficult to have an on-prem setup and everything. And it's very, very challenging. Uh, I mean, while we want to have this in on-prem service, unfortunately, this is not available and cannot be installed on on-prem service. So what can be done is basically you can integrate it uh, in your on-prem system using BTP integration services, you know. So you could use uh, integration services that are provided as part of BTP and then work with an on-prem system. This is what a typical use case is uh, for many of our customers because the, uh, the, the backend is actually sitting in the on-prem system. They use integration services to call the cloud. But the important point to note is uh, uh, it is not, you need to actually call the cloud to actually consume the service. You cannot be having a service uh, within your own environment and on-prem, yeah? So that is the whole idea. And you need BTP for this, yeah, BTP services. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. All right, uh, the next question we have is, is this applicable also for transactional and master HR data in success factors? Okay, good question. Uh, so currently we do not have any integrations uh, that are automatically available with success factors or even for that matter S4 HANA as well. So I was mentioning it as an example uh, that we had it. Uh, but the idea is uh, we don't really, so you could technically use it uh, for success factors because success factors does provide a lot of APIs, you know, SOAP and, you know, you can consume uh, even extending success factors. You can use this service and use it for success factors. But again, out of the box, you won't get any of these, right? Because uh, this service, uh, data recommendation service is not embedded into success factors uh, to be very, very clear. But if you want to extend it and uh, enhance, you know, your, uh, you know, mass data management or mastering uh, your mass data HR, HR data management in success factors, Factors. You could uh, talk to your success factors extension colleagues and see how you can extend it. And there you could consume a service like this and make it intelligent. Definitely that's possible. But out of the box, we don't provide this. So it's not available. Yeah. I guess there was a follow up question on this one. Um, probably, probably like, is there a limit up to which we can upload our training master data and how is the data stored, encrypted or unencrypted? Yeah, very, very good question. Yeah. 
So if you're going to be using the trial landscape, there are limits definitely because uh, you know the trial landscape that we provide and all the tutorials and everything, there is a 10 megabyte limit uh, that we have. And uh, we also limit the amount of uh, models that you can deploy. So for that purpose, uh, definitely there are some restrictions, uh, but uh, you know, there are, no, there are, uh, there are uh, uh, I mean, I think the restrictions on production landscape are not that harsh. You can upload up to five gigabytes of uh, worth of data, you know, at least for now. And uh, we can also up, uh, do up to um, uh, 20, 20 features of selection that is also available. You know, you don't have the limits on the production landscape, but if you have a really large requirements. Uh, we'll be happy to, you know, address that. But uh, in our experience so far, we are able to address that. So all of this information, what I'm saying is actually available in the SAP help documentation. So if you look at the limits uh, in that, there's a section called limits uh, in that, uh, you know, you have all of these things laid out. So there are also certain limits, like how many, uh, you know, calls you can make in a minute, you know, in, in with, with one single payload, how you can, how many, uh, you know, calls you can make. And currently we do not have the batch uh, mode support as well, uh, because there are certain restrictions that we have uh, because, uh, because of the, uh, the way the currently the service is used. Uh, so that's why, you know, I would suggest uh, you look at the help documentation uh, to get uh, more details on, you know, what is the restrictions. Now, in terms of data, right, data, when you upload it, it's actually uploaded into, into our servers and it's actually stored. Uh, and it is actually in your tenant and uh, there, is, there is default encryption. But again, uh, you know, we don't have any specific uh, you know, we don't give the option for the user to actually do all this encryption because it's uh, you're getting the default uh, security that is actually part of the, the cloud platform. So whatever you can do in cloud platform level layer, you know, you could be able to uh, do that encryption and, uh, you know, all of that aspects, yeah. Thank you, Satish. Uh, also, thank you for the presentation and the demo. I hope it was helpful for the audience. Um, and you mentioned great assets, also where to look it up. Um, there's another question now that came in. Um, so after the training master data is uploaded, can we amend or delete or re-upload? Absolutely, absolutely. The, so you can actually retrain as many times as you want. It doesn't really, when you call the training batch, uh, so when you execute a training job, it actually starts the retraining process using the second data that you have sent it, right? So that's the whole idea. And in, in typical production landscapes, so what we have is uh, we have multiple models running. For example, some customers will have one field prediction, for example, material class, they'll have one model running and they would have another model that does price prediction or another one, right? So for that, each of that, there will be different uh, training data set that they use. So there'll be multiple models running and they do retraining. You can actually set up some of these processes uh, and you know, this is definitely, yeah, it's, it's possible, yeah. Cool, and while we're waiting for more questions to come in from the audience, uh, what I want to mention before was, um, there are great assets. You also have a slide for this uh, with the links where you can learn more about SAP AI uh, business services, um, but also the slide deck recording uh, will be available. You will have uh, the possibility to find more SAP community calls um, in the community um, and yeah, now we have the next question coming in. So can we have our custom logic of sequence or sequence where the preference should be on the selected fields if we find two or more having similar confidence score? Very, very good question. So currently, currently, you know, we don't have this concept of, uh, you know, feature selection. So what we mean by that is, uh, let's say today, what, what we provide is uh, you can actually select the relevant fields up to 20 to predict a particular field. So let's say you see, you, you, you realize that these are the 20 fields that are the influencing factors for a particular field. You just define that in the JSON file and we will do all the all the processing because uh, we have pre-processing steps. The algorithm, uh, the DAR service has uh, data recommendation service has all of these uh, mechanisms in place where it will take that and it will actually done or do all of the you know analysis behind the scenes and actually do all of it for you. So you can't really control on that level. And this comes in into the picture when you have more than 100, 100 uh, you know, fields that influence it, right? So that is the kind of scenario. This is the feature selection part that, uh, you know, in fact, there's a requirement that we are actually having it as part of the roadmap. But, uh, but you know, at, at the moment, you can't really uh, have any custom, uh, you know, feature selection that you could do. Uh, but you could actually say these are the influencing factors and we will actually choose them and uh, give you the confidence. So, so the... Uh, so the idea is when after the training is done, you get um, you get uh, fields like F1 score, the accuracy model accuracy, and all of that. Based on that, you can make a judgment if it's uh, working or not, and then you know you could uh, do the retraining or other parts. Yeah. So that's the idea. Good question. Yeah. 
Yeah, very great uh, for all the questions coming from the participants. Um, you can still continue asking questions even after this call. Um, right. As you can see, um, Satish is online in the SAP yeah. community. He has published a blog post recently and is also active, can address questions also in a follow up. I would highly recommend to go to um, community.sap.com slash topics, where you can find the AI business services topic page, where you will uh, find further blog posts, further help documentation, all the the resources that you need to learn more and um, also the opportunity for you to raise further questions if you have any coming up after this uh, presentation Very good. all right we'll take yeah it. there's another question that came in we we also have a, enough time still so people uh, yeah. everyone who is still in, in online please take the opportunity um, now let's continue with the next question that came in can the uh, DAR service trigger a workflow on BTP for the user to choose which is the correct recommendation and then the machine will keep on learning based on user decisions? Uh, for example, there are two matching records on which, on which the confidence score of 99 and another of 98 then if the user approves the 98 score record in future, um, it will be a preferred choice. Um, yeah, what it's a, <laughs> already it's a saying question. a very <laughs> question. <laughs> correct, correct. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's actually a very good question, I would say, because uh, in fact, uh, so just to answer, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll answer this question, right? So from a service standpoint, we don't have this kind of mechanisms built in. And there is a reason for that, because it's not really a workflow service, you know, we are providing you uh, the, the the results and the confidence. So now every application want to use it in a different way. And we don't want to be using uh, any of these, uh, you know, things to trigger a certain action in an application, right? So this is where we have SAP workflow service that actually does all of this and which can be done, right? As we speak, you know, we are actually working on something, uh, you know, on that lines, you know, maybe you'll, 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 hear, you'll hear about that soon. But in general, the, the service does not have any workflow triggers embedded automatically today, as of today. Uh, Excuse me. And the reason for that is we want uh, the application to make the decision. We will give you all the metrics and uh, the, let the application make the decision. Yeah. So it was not as vague as uh, <laughs> it's not not vague. It's, it's, a, it's a real <laughs> question. It's a real question, actually. No. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, the idea is actually you know we thought about this and it's usually it varies by application. Yeah. So very good. I think it's been a very productive session. Really, uh, thank you everyone for asking very very good questions uh, and um, I hope the session was. Uh, helpful for all of you uh, definitely we are in the community feel free to ask questions in the in the in the community we'll be happy to answer you know and uh, a lot of our my colleagues actually do uh, many of these sessions uh, on a business services you can use one or more of these services and uh, you know build a, a very very good use case that has a lot of automation so we are looking forward to helping you in the community forums thank you thank so you. much for your time satish thank you Manila.